Okay. So there's an overlook or an overview here of the dam. Yeah. <laughs> nice view. 700 something feet. This is the downstream side, obviously, of the dam. There's the, there's the generating station down there. There are 17 turbines down there. I don't know how many on one side and how many on the other. The dam is like over 600 feet wide at the base and only about 45 feet wide at the top. Of course, this is... Uh, in addition to the video that we saw yesterday. Okay. 55 degrees. Oh my goodness. At the base, you see two long buildings, one on each side of the canyon. These house the 17 generators that create the electrical energy that provides the funding for the operation and maintenance of this facility. Dizzy, this huh? allows Hoover Dam to operate without the use of taxpayer dollars. You'll notice the roofs on both buildings appear to have wires coming out of them. This is called the takeoff structure. From the takeoff structure, the wires carry the electricity up and over the canyon walls at 230,000 volts. Holy cow. The towers that support and direct the wires are leaning into the canyon. These are cantilever towers designed to ensure that the wires do not touch the walls of the canyon and short out. Now look downriver, midway on the canyon wall, and you will see a rectangular concrete building with six holes. This is the valve house. There are two, one on each side of the canyon. Each building contains two that the ancient jet flow gates. These gates allow us to run water around the turbines if necessary. Daddy? 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 Wow, that's... The what a beautiful sight there, the huh? Our sixth 3.5 inch diameter cables. If you follow the cables to the right, you will see the lifting mechanism of the crane that is supported by the cables. This is the original crane from the building of the dam. Talk about that. It is the oldest and largest continuously operating cableway crane system in the world with a lift capacity of 150 tons. Wow, what a sight. <laughs> Isn't that something? Beautiful, huh? Yeah. It's kind of makes you dizzy, though, looking that far down. It's only like seven, eight hundred feet down, but geez. Can you talk in it while we stand over this? You know. What? I don't know, like a selfie. A selfie with the video? Selfie. What, to prove that I'm here? Yeah, to prove we're here. Yeah, we're here. We got our tickets. Our and our tickets. Fans. Yeah, we took the full tour. Uh, this is phase two. We watched a movie already. Phase two is to come over to the museum and then come up to the observation deck. We have about 15 minutes to get down to the next phase, which we don't even know. They know see our wristbands and they go, okay, you're in this group here. This is where you're going. So not sure how long it takes. I know we're going to get a tour of the power plant. And I think one of the tunnels, I don't know if it's a spillway tunnel or, or what. 
but I think we're getting a, a tunnel uh, uh, something. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll let, let you know, you know. As, as we go through. So, okay, that's it for now. Okay, we are down in the damn dam. Actually going down, but thanks, thanks for that. Six point six million tons of concrete. That's enough concrete to 
go to Lane Highway from San Francisco, California, all the way to New York City. Water comes to Lake Mead, then just through four intake towers. Now you've seen the intake towers. Those are the towers that the base to see outside. They look like the corner lake. So water comes in through gates in those intake towers. Then goes to large 30 foot pin stock pipes like the one you see outside the window. There's small 13 foot pin stock pipes. Goes down each generator, spins the generators, goes on downstream. There's one other way to move water, and it's for spillways. Now, spillways serve to act like an overflow drain in the bathtub. The bathtub starts to flow, and you want the water over the sides of the tub and onto the floor. So it goes in and drain goes on out. Well, suddenly your flake beat starts to flow, water goes through spill. when it actually used the spillways. It's the one and only time that the water ever went over into the spillways. So we're in the Nevada side of You're the You're now standing on Nevada side of Hoover Dam Power Plant, where the generators are on this side. said that the shaft below the generator goes 65 feet down to the water turbine that actually turns it. There's eight turbines on this side, so there must be uh, nine on the Arizona side. Because there's 17 total.
place in the hallway you just saw us walking down was actually the riverside towards the lake side thickness of the dam okay all right we're down at 975 now watch your step above sea level oh. okay we were walking down a tunnel that you can see downstream of the now with that pipe there downstream of the uh, dam we're walking through the thickness of the dam right now and we're going to, okay and we're going to look out one of the vents I don't know jump go just go I wonder how far down that goes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that's the water down there. Don't care. 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 Don't because that was probably put there 35 years ago, and there were a lot thinner people that walked across it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just water down there. All right. Watch so this is one of the dam vents. All right, we're on again. We are in the vent of the dam, which is on the downstream side. You saw it on my previous video. The vents that were in the side. Well, now we're standing behind one of those grills. So, one quick look down river, and we have a line behind us. There we go. We have to do this carefully. They have warned us. Phones have been lost here. There we go. Boy. You can hardly see it. I know. Can't see it. But it counts, huh? It counts. That counts. It's pretty ingenious, though. Huh? Indentations for lobes. Yeah. So, yeah. So right here is where they're inspecting a crack. <coughs> now there's hundreds of these little tiny hairline cracks in the dam. That's just a product of the concrete. Concrete's going to match your crack. Unless gets over a certain threshold, I don't know what that threshold is. But unless gets over a certain threshold, we don't have to worry about it. But they're measuring them and marking them just in case. So when they find a crack, what they're going to do is they're going to mark with chalk, they're going to record the measurement and the date. In this case, the measurement is 0.01, which means one hundredth of an inch. They first inspected June 15th of 1942. Oh, we're good. No. <laughs> so, yeah. so why are they measuring and marking them? Well, so later on, they can come back to the state crack, measure it again, see what's going on with this gun. Any right. bigger, if it stayed yeah, the same, that makes sense. what's going on with it. Now, the state never had a crack big enough to have to worry about. So what would they do, what would they do if they found one? I have no idea. <laughs> They probably don't either. Maybe Gorilla Glue or something, I don't know. This is probably made better than the bridge that collapsed in Tennessee. How often they inspect? Yeah. Every, every three months. Every three months. Every three months. It's all quick these days. Oh, yeah. And so uh, when, you're, when you're walking through this tunnel, you'll find all sorts of markings on the wall. You'll find markings like that where they're inspecting cracks. You'll find what it looks like engineers are doing calculations on the wall. you also find just plain graffiti. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, please not add to the graffiti on our damn walls. Yeah. So we're just walking basically half. Because they dropped this down from the generator. Look at this, it's a big crack, doesn't it? It's not. It's a... Everybody just, uh, there you go. Seam from the pour? Huh? A seam from when they poured it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Expand it. Okay, right there is good. Stephanie. Stephanie. Stephanie was here. Right here. All right, so uh, right here is what looks like a big crack. It goes all the way around. It's not a crack. It's actually what's known as an expansion joint. So our two concrete blocks come together. One concrete block begins, another concrete block ends. 
You see, every day with Billis, there's an interlocking concrete block, sort of like a giant Lego set. This is so massive a project, in fact, the largest government project in history up at that time, they couldn't just do one single concrete pour, so they poured in sections and blocks. And each of these blocks are all five feet deep, but they varied in size. Smallest blocks around 25 by 25 feet. Largest blocks around 50 by 50 feet. All the blocks are five feet deep. And so what you do is you just keep up in concrete, the concrete block three to five inches at a time, keep up in concrete. You fill that block up. Once you get that block filled up, then you go for someplace else and fill that block up three to five inches at a time. <coughs> Once you get that block filled up, then you go for someplace else and do the same thing. Now if there's semi terrace, you can go back to the previous block, pour another block right on top. So the blocks, interlocking blocks of concrete stacked all the way up. So how they formed these tunnels specifically? Well, they had the wood forms already in place, and then they poured the concrete over the wood forms. And when they got done with the wood forms, they took the wood forms out, but left the imprint of the wood forms. And that's what you see here is the imprint of the wood forms that they used. Now, the wood they used to form this tunnel out is cypress wood. So why cypress? Well, at that time, cypress is cheap as readily available. Second of all, there's a, cypress is more water resistant. There's less rotting with cypress. Most important reason why they use cypress, cypress is very oily wood. There's a lot of oils in that cypress wood. And because of the oils in the cypress wood, the wood forms were able to be released more easily from the concrete. See, it's all about speed, ladies and gentlemen. I have to remember they were pouring a bucket of concrete somewhere in the dam every 78 to 90 seconds. That would be very fast and it would be very efficient. So that's why the uh, cypress wood. The cypress came from Florida and Louisiana. Did you say how many tunnels are like this in the dam? Nine inspection tunnels. Nine inspection tunnels. Okay, thank you. On the earthquake sensor, there's a block, there's a sign that says, do not touch a kick earthquake sensor. As you pass, please not kick the damn box. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to show you the emergency escape route. No. I can't. <laughs> now we'll see if you emergency up. escape route Rocky. going down oh and going up <laughs> going up I'm dead <laughs> I'm not afraid of okay so there's the two generating stations we were in the one on the right when you saw those generators and about three of the generators I believe were running and then the two smaller buildings above that are um, I want to take a picture of that. Uh, kind of like a pressure relief valve. If there's no generators running, they let the extra water come out of those. And then if you go way down there where that concrete pipe is coming out of the rock on the right, that is basically your spillway overflow, which has only been used in 1983 when the lake was actually full. <laughs>